I took a mint. Help yourself. <laughs> that is what they are there for. I just, for some reason, that line has always stuck with me. I, I took a mint. Yes, I Prince Alexander. Mint. That's what they're for. <laughs> like, I shot the president. I shot the president. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this playthrough of King's Cuff. Oh, fucking Christ. Oh, God. <laughs> King's Cuff 6, everybody. That was an in-joke. Um, you'll never get an explanation for it, and everybody <laughs> who should click off the video probably already has. Uh, I've, got, uh, I've got Brandon and Geek with me. So, uh, Chaotic evil. I love King's Quest 6. It is goofy and it is wonderful and I love it in every way. Uh, Brandon and Water Geek do not know much about the King's Quest series. I think both of you said independently you've seen a bit of some King's Quest game, but you don't know if it was this one or another one. Yeah, I have no idea. I don't think it's this one just based on the uh, on the intro alone. Yeah, okay. that's that's good. Uh, all you need to know about this game is that uh, I'll, I'll let you guys make the wider decisions, but for the sake of keeping things moving, uh, I know most of the story beats and generally where to go and generally how to solve most of the puzzles. There are three or four variants of the ending, depending on which way you go. And I think I might just leave that up to you guys. I don't know if I will try to guide that in any given direction, as if I even remember how to get some of them. Uh, we will watch the opening, because if you just hit play, it's just going to dump you straight into the game. Uh, and you'll have no idea what's going on. So let's watch the opening. Long ago, in the castle of a kingdom called Devontree, Oh no, Reboot. Alexander, here you are. Reboot looks oh, better than this. still not thinking about Cosima, are you? Hmm? I suppose I am. Son, it's been months. You've got to pull yourself together. After all, you only met her that once. I know. Have you discovered anything about the land of the Green Isles? Son, look at no. my bulge. No one's even heard of it. It's like she's just vanished. I wish I could help. Please try to think about something else, dear. I'll try, Mother. Alexander, and that girl that you met one time. I don't know what to do. Alexander, I wish you were here. Alexander, Alexander, Alexander. Cosima, wait! Mother, mother, come quick! Alexander, what on earth? You're white as a ghost. Mother, I saw Cosima. She was in the mirror. In the mirror? The magic mirror? Yes. Showed me how to find her. How? The stars. I saw the stars outside her window. I can navigate by the stars. Oh, Alexander, if you really go, it will be all right, Mother. I promise. Oh God, it was never supposed to be seen in this resolution. <laughs> I'll navigate Jesus. with the stars. Yeah, he saw the it ones like that may have happened second. years ago. <laughs> This was cutting edge in 1992. They do and then, and out. then, and then the King of Red Lion sails by. Luke, the music is too similar for me. <laughs> we must go to Dragon Roost Island. I think this whole shot here is just so you can be amazed by the graphics of 1992. <laughs> I am pretty amazed. I think this game came out when I was born. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> this came out two years before me. Careful there, Alexander. You're going to fall off the ship. It's rocking pretty hard. Three long months, Prince Alexander sailed the known seas and beyond. Alone. 
just like that. <laughs> That's all he, he was doing. He didn't move. <laughs> Moving as little <laughs> as he could to save on animation budget. <laughs> It's just a tube. It has no glass. What? It, uh, assume anything in. He looks too much like lame Gaston. He it's better like not Gaston. see anything, because I swear to God. <laughs> fucking Christ. <laughs> Moby Dick! And then, oh. Oh, there are other people. Oh, he traveled with pirates. He's the most he... generic pirates you've ever seen. The, the boat's gonna, like, sink. It's rocking too much. looking at right now. I think our sails turned green. Clearly the ship was just drifting. The, the ship didn't gas, hit anything. Gas, gas, gas! I'm gonna step on the gas. <laughs> it looks like we crashed into the island. <laughs> we did. <laughs> it's like the camera. Wait, what's oh. that low resolution text say? I can't read it. <laughs> it's a screensaver. <laughs> it's a, oh man! <laughs> Windows 98! And then it starts to just slowly bounce from corner to corner. Yeah. Never quite hits the corners like those DVD menus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. King's Quest V. It is King's Quest Six. It... Roberto Williams and Jane Jensen. You know, those are big names back in the day. They just, Williams, I'm sure nowadays yeah, to most people, they probably just sound like names. Those two made some great games. They, that's where basically all the King's Quest games were, is Jane Jensen and Roberta Williams. They're female, right? Yeah. Yo, Key? That's a good name. I'm loving the music, I gotta say. There we go. Alexander awakens to find himself on an unfamiliar beach. For a moment, he is too dazed to remember how he got here. Hard night in the town. But then, he does remember. The telescope. The shipwreck. The sea. Just as he had seen his men safely into the lifeboats, a gigantic wave picked him up and tossed him overboard into the churning sea. Hi, Alexander. That was I'm the waving last at you. he'd seen of his crew. Debris from the shipwreck is scattered along the shore, but of the lifeboats and his men, there is thankfully no trace. Hated those guys. He can only hope and pray that the lifeboats survived the currents and that his men made their way safely back to Devontree. Uh, hopefully they didn't go all the way back to Davenport. <laughs> yeah, just three months away. Exactly. I don't think about it too hard. Okay, so maybe six months by rowboat. We'll see a uh, game speed. It reset itself from testing earlier. Okay, let's jack that right up. Okay, so uh, if you've never seen a King's Quest game before, uh, this was the last of the really good ones, I would say, before it got bad and then really, really bad when they decided to make it into. I guess a gothic game style RPG, which was horrific, and we're not going to talk about that. So we're watching this in a really, really high resolution right now, which it was never supposed to be seen in. But even then, you can tell this game would have been really beautiful for 1992. I mean, like all of this uh, hand-drawn art and everything, it almost looks like the concept art for a game. And you can see why this is kind of why... Uh, at the time, people would say PC games look so much better than than uh, console games, even though nowadays we'd often say console games from this era aged better. Um, also, an interesting little mechanic of the time is they wrote dialogue that's voice acted for just about fucking everything you can think of. I'm going to look at that grass. The island is covered with lush green plants. I'm going to look at that rock. Rocks abound on this lush volcanic isle. 
Can I look at that bush? The island is covered. Oh, no, that's a, that's a duplicate. A long plank lies on the beach. No doubt it once belonged to Alexander's ship. Okay. And another thing of Sierra uh, Adventure Games is basically everything can kill you and the game has a snide remark about it. Here's an example. The ocean is not as calm as it appears. Underwater currents tug at Alexander's legs. Now, this one's a rarity in that it actually gives you a warning. Most King's Test games do not. The underwater toe is amazingly strong here. It pulls ferociously at Alexander's legs. Before Alexander can retreat, the current grabs his legs. The shifting sand vanishes from beneath his feet. Against his best efforts, he is dragged out to sea. What the fuck? What? Bye. There's a lot the of effort. on the island pull Alexander under. And he discovers the lost city of Atlantis. <laughs> As Alexander struggles to the surface for the third and last time, he finds himself wishing he'd paid more attention to the warning signs of an undertow. Do not enter. Okay. Listen to the text box. What the fuck? Oh, I was joking, but okay. Tickets. Oh. Next. Nothing like getting swept off your feet. That is how much fucking effort it puts into killing you. How much dialogue did they record for that? They drew all new scenes? Like, that's incredible. Uh, restart literally restarts the entire game, by the way, because we never saved, but it doesn't matter because we're literally just at the very start of the video game. Okay. There's no way he was knee-deep in the water that close <laughs> yeah. to the beach and got swept <laughs> out to sea. I know, but it's wonderful. All right, That's and one hell of an undertow. And Get once that again, coin. Uh, yeah, so that coin is exactly two pixels. Exactly two pixels. I can see them on my giant-ass monitor. Could you imagine in 1992 on a tiny CRT trying to see that fucking coin? I mean, that's why they added Alexander the shimmer. Alexander picks up his royal insignia ring from the beach. There we What's go. A ring? It's a ring. Now, you want a real bullshit one? These games are also full of... They, th these games, if you know how to do them, and you know exactly what to do, you could probably beat most of them in an hour if you're going to skip the cutscenes, which it, if you're skipping the cutscenes, what's the point of playing, honestly, with this game? Um... And so to elongate these games, they often like putting you in situations where you can't progress anymore and you got to restart the game, but you don't know it. Or otherwise impossible to find shit that you just need to click everything on everything to figure out. King's Quest VI is probably the least guilty one of these things. I don't think you're ever in a permanently fucked situation in this game, which is good, because uh, that would be horrible. However... Alexander pushes the plank to one side. A box has been partially buried under sand. Would you ever think to click that completely innocuous plank when there's all this other debris? And you I think have modern to. day point and click games, because they poke fun at a lot of old Sierra games, uh, I think they have, I guess, helped me to understand that that was, used to be a thing is literally click everything. Yeah. See what could be gotten from it. Like yeah. Strong bad game, for example. That was, mo yeah, the, the strong bad or the, the Homestar Runner games, the point click adventures they made for that were very much based on King's Quest, not on like the LucasArts ones, which were more forgiving. Hence why they made Peasant's Quest. Alexander mm -hmm. takes the coin and leaves the ruined box where it is. All right, that coin is required and really valuable. Also, right. another thing is uh, Sam and Max does that a lot, too. I think we're done on this screen. So let's let's get going. All right, it's time to progress with the game. Now, uh, autosave didn't exist back in these days. So, you know, this is where this is where the kind of thing of safe, really safe often, often comes from. Uh, if you're wondering why this screen does not match the rest of the game at all, by the way, um, I own this game on good old games, so we're just going to call this Start. I own this on good old games, um, so this is the most modern version of the game, uh, which means it will have the fully drawn portraits, uh, like the, the, the portraits will be drawn like the landscapes rather than just like pixel art kind of thing. And I think I can investigate this. A grand old tree stretches its luxurious limbs out over the crossroads. 
Okay, I can't cool. do anything with that yet. Let's touch go to it. town. Touch it. You gotta touch it. Stick Alexander your hand in the hole. See no reason to clamor about on the old tree. He would only scar its bark. Well, that'd be really rude of me. Alex, that's not the kind of guy that Alexander is. Let's talk to oh, the yeah, tree. Oh yeah, you gotta talk to it. The old tree must have witnessed many intrigues and many tragedies, but it keeps its stories to itself. I love Damn. that. There's oh, really? so much, like, if, if you just do random shit that you have no reason to believe would ever be useful, it still has interesting dialogue for you. Okay, well, Talk actually, if we're rock. gonna... If we're, okay. The rocks are silent, as they have been for ages untold. Or did you mean this yeah. rock? The rocks are... Ah, oh, I was hoping for different dialogue. You gotta touch the small one. Okay. Alexander has no need to carry around uh. large rocks. All right, we're yeah, done here. Oh, though. Okay, now if we're going to see Kasima, I feel like the the castle might be a good first step. Unless she's pulling a Jasmine from Aladdin and is investigating the local town. Mm hmm. Oh, here we go. All right. No comment. Oh. I mean, she's there. Now talk to the castle. Okay. <laughs> The castle is as silent as marble. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. All right, let's talk to the guards. Alexander politely addresses the odd-looking guards at the castle doors, Racist. hoping to learn more about his predicament. Good day to you, guards. I was cast oh, upon Jesus. this island in a storm, and I'm a little confused about my location. Could you tell me what place this is and who lives in this castle? Hey, what is that you say? A castaway? A likely story. We haven't had any foreigners in this part since El Hazaret arrived. Ah, don't be so rude, Gruff. He's not asking for any secrets. You're standing on the Isle of the Crown, lad. And this is the Castle of the Crown. The royal family resides here. Or uh, rather, what's left of the royal family. The Isle of the Crown? But tell me, am I anywhere near the land of the Green Isles? This is the land of the Green Isles. The Isle of the Crown is the main island, foolish boy. Then Princess Cosima must live in this very castle. Aye, the princess is indeed our treasure jewel to God, and we consider it an honor. An honor. So interestingly enough, I've just noticed on the recording monitor right now, uh, this has oh, those are the, dogs. <laughs> yes, uh, this has the old school style of only redrawing uh, when there's movement on screen, which means if there's a dialogue box that has no accompanying um, portrait with a moving mouth, that means I need to subtly move my mouse to get it to redraw the new text bubble for the audience. Now I know. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm not I'm not allowed in, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna walk away for now. I well, feel like I spent a lot of time in this game just clicking on stupid anything. Oh yeah, I, I absolutely did growing up with stuff like this, cause it's just fun, and also you sometimes get useful things. <gasps> this man, talk. I know yeah. him. He's not as useful as that pawn shop, though. Go All talk right. to it. I will talk to him then if he's not gonna talk on his own like he usually does. Or Good day, books. Good day, sir. If you would like to get one of my fine new lamps, I'll need an old lamp in trade. Isn't it a rather bad business? Taking old lamps and giving new King lamps Alexander! <laughs> well, there's always a chance that I'll find a genie. If I had a genie, I'd be richer than a king. Besides, there's always a roaring business in... Antique luminaries. I honestly thought that he buys old lamps and just sells old lamps, but he calls them new. No, uh, he's the old lamps for new guy. One of the biggest quotes from this game. Uh, let's go into the pawn shop. This is where we can finally there learn some stuff. Antiquities. This guy, I love to death. He comes across like... In, if he were in any other game, he'd be the most condescending motherfucker in the universe. But this is King's Quest and everything is innocent, so I just love the way he talks. Good day, merchant. What can you tell me about the land of the Green Isles? I can tell you she is in a dark time. Without the ferry, communication between the islands has ground to a halt, and so nearly has my business. Why the long ages of peace have ended, 
and why the crown has not done something about it is beyond me. But then, I am a shopkeeper, not a politician, and can only hope for better days. Usher! <laughs> yeah, it's deadly premonition. All right, uh, so the first thing we want to do is, uh, if we look at our coin Alexander here... Alexander is carrying a copper the coin, coin of Daventry. King Graham graces the front of the coin. This is a copper coin of Daventry, which uh, Alexander we are the prince rubs of... Alexander his it. fingers over the indentation of King Graham's face on the copper coin and thinks fondly of home. I, I actually and meant then, to pick it up. It. I actually meant to pick it up. I forgot that's... It's not finger, it's mouse pointer. God, that's confusing. I have this copper coin. Is it of any value to you at all? Hmm, most interesting. I have never seen a Daventry coin before, but it is copper genuine enough. I might even find a buyer who is interested in foreign currency. The items on the front counter are the only things in the store that I can let go for the price of one copper. You may make your choice from there. Alexander looks at the items on the counter to make his selection. Okay, so we have four items. We want I the see bird. You have noticed my mechanical nightingale. She oh, is it's made mechanical? of tin, that. but she sings the sweetest song you can imagine. Barely distinguishable from the real thing. Okay. The flute is only made of plain wood, but its notes are fine and true. So, flute? Ah, yes, the painter's brush. It was well used by one of the island's best painters. There's a lot of creativity in that brush, and its bristles are still in good condition. Most of the same could be said for me. A battered <laughs> tinder box uh, is I... this... A battered... Aww. He doesn't want to My talk bad. about it now. It's, it's okay. a tinder box. It's a tinder box. That's all you need to know. So what do you guys think we should take? I think we should get the bird. What uh, a geek? Your vote? Uh, 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 tin box. All right. I vote bird. Two to one. Fuck you. Damn. We're getting the bird. It is actually the most useful right now. That mechanical nightingale looks intriguing. I believe I'll take it. Very well. Your coin is well spent. Remember, this is a pawn shop. I am always willing to take back my own goods in trade. I'll remember. Thank you. Okay, so is that the stupidest business practice you've ever heard? We can walk back to him at any point in the game and trade in this nightingale for any of the other items and just swap them in and out at this store whenever we need to solve a puzzle that requires a different one. <laughs> How does he make a profit? Oh, it's unbelievable. He did make a profit. He gave you, he, he gained a copper coin. Ah, and then oh, I will continue no, no, to no. come back here and trade it for every one of the other items over and over forever. Yeah. Oh, all right. It's time for my favorite dialogue in the game. An elegant little glass dish decorates the countertop. The dish is full of green mints offered for the enjoyment of the customer. They look blue, but I'll take one. Alexander takes a mint. Alexander took a mint. Let's examine the mint. The small green mint looks very tasty. Blue hmm. mint. The mint might melt if Alexander held it too tightly. Well, okay. Yeah, but eat it. I need to show it to this man. I took a mint. Help yourself. <laughs> that is what they're there for. I just... For some reason, that line has always stuck with me. I, I took a mint. Yes, took Prince a mint. Alexander. That's what they're for. <laughs> like, I shot the president. I shot the president. Oh, fuck. Resident that's Evil okay. 6. That's what they're there for. <laughs> <laughs> I just love the idea that the ultimate dink of a character, Prince Alexander, picks. he takes a mint. And he is so innocent, he needs to then show the mint to the man. And he's like, yeah, that's why I have the mints for you. <laughs> oh, God, I love that. All right. Alexander's ring is made of the purest gold and has the insignia of the royal family of Daventry on its face. Can I trade this for this flute? <laughs> If Alexander wants to exchange one of his possessions for an item in the pawn shop, he'll have to arrange it with the pawn shop owner first by showing him the object for trade. Thought I did? I guess I misclicked? Can you tell me, merchant, what the value of this ring might be? 
by the sands of the sea. What a beauty! What fine gold and masterful artistry! This ring is quite valuable, sir. I would not feel right taking it in trade. None of the items on display at my humble store are even close to the value of this ring. Truly? Well, it would be hard to part with it anyway, I suppose. You're the suppose. worst pawn shop owner ever. <laughs> I refuse to take your incredibly valuable thing and give you a less valuable thing. Oh, this ring made of gold? You can have a mint. <laughs> Would you like all <laughs> the mint? mint? Would you like all the mints, Prince Alexander? <laughs> sure. I took a jar of mints. Well, I, didn't we trade for that? Uh, g game? Is something supposed yeah. to be happening right now? I, uh... Oh, there are the wind chimes. I, uh... Oh, no. Oh, that's... I've never seen that before. How oh. bide you, good merchant? Oh, Quite hey, well. it fixed itself. Oh, uh, purchase would not hurt me any. <laughs> oh, okay. I don't know how that happened, but the game fixed itself. That was weird. Okay, uh, I don't mm. think we need to be here anymore right now. So let's go. Beautiful. Let's go to Ollie's books. Because that has to do with our last Ollie, right Hello. Is that the devil? I will be right up. Is that death? That, uh, that, that might now, actually be death. What can I do for you? Okay. Oh no, he's uh, got a shiny face. An old man occasionally steals sidelong glances at Alexander from under a concealing hood. Don't mm. steal glances. That's a rude. Thief. The bookshop owner is a thin, middle-aged man. His intelligent eyes are slightly blurry from long nights spent reading by candlelight. So his mm. eyes are blurry? Holy shit! Yeah, that's that sounds weird. There's a small table near the door that bears a sign. The sign has undergone a number of changes. It once read, ten pence, but that was crossed out and replaced with five pence, then one pence, then free. The sign currently reads, take one, please. All Only right. one book remains on the table. It looks I took like a book. the bookshop <laughs> owner really wants to get rid of that book. All right, I will. Uh, well, this is an adventure game, so why not? Alexander picks up the book from the small table. Oh, yes, please take that book. You have my most humble thanks for doing so good, sir. Really? Put it back down. Thanks. So that little doo 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 noise, uh, that says that we got a point. You can see our score right there. You don't need to max out the score, but generally, if you're getting score, you're doing something right. But I think this is a perfect time to end the first episode. In between episodes, I will attempt to fix this uh, weird little having to move my mouse thing. I have a pretty obvious fix in mind that I think will do it. And if you want to keep watching this series, then I'll have a playlist both on screen as well as in the description. Thank you, everybody, for watching. And until next time, have a nice day. See you. Flare out.